Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be checking out one of the beefiest, most premium smartphones in existence and despite that, it's probably one you've never even heard of. I'm talking about the Vivo EQ9 Pro. EQ? 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 Uh, when they asked me if I had any questions, I probably should have said, how do you actually pronounce the bloody thing? Gobbledygook name aside, the EQ9 Pro sports all kinds of crazy specs, including a near 6.8 inch AMOLED LTPO screen with a Quad HD Plus resolution. You've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, freshly launched to the Arsene of 2021, packed in there. A 4,700 milliamp battery with 120 watt wireless charging support. You've got a 50 megapixel rear camera with gimbal optical image stabilization. And this right here is the special edition BMW M Motorsport model as well, packed and some very snazzy design. But enough of me waffling on, let's get this thing out of the box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Okay, so first up, what do you actually get inside of this lovely box? So you've got an absolute beef kick of an adapter packed in there. Got your USB charging cable, quite a big one as well, fnaf fnaf. You've got a Type-C USB to 3.5mm headphone jack adapter, which means no headphone jack on the actual phone itself, boo hiss. You've got uh, a picture of a car, looks like quite a nice car, presumably a BMW. The headlight kind of reminds me of a banana. I mean, I'm going to be perfectly honest in case you haven't realised by now, I know absolutely shag all about cars, so uh, that's kind of lost on me. And uh, oh, it's the same car on the back, or another car that looks very similar. And of course, you've got the actual Ikru 9 Pro itself, but not only that, but you also get a protective case bundled in there, which actually retains the same sort of design, so you're not covering it up and masking that lovely finish. And that right there is everything you get bundled in the box with the phone. Pretty good haul overall. So now let's check out that phone. So first impressions of this bad boy are that it's rather bloody big. It's a mighty 6.78 inch display. It's certainly one of the biggest out there even in 2022. But as you can see, they're surrounded by pretty skinny bezels and the screen does actually slope around the left and right edges as well. So not much added bulk. And this phone's got a proper heft to it as well. Weighs over 200 grams. You certainly feel it when it's stuffed away inside your pocket. And this is a phone that feels as premium as it looks as well. The engine is constructed from an aerospace grade aluminium alloy. As you can see, they're very skinny on the left and right edges where the curved glass almost meets the curved glass of the back. And speaking of that arse end, it really is the star of the show here on the Ikru 9 Pro. Certainly a very original design. In keeping with the car theme, of course, you've got a go faster stripe all the way down at that right edge and a proper wide boy camera bump as well. It's absolutely chuffing enormous, although also thankfully it doesn't really jut very far out of the back end. At least when the phone is resting on a desk and you're tappy tapping on that screen, it's not rattling about all over the place. That's definitely good. And I've got to say, even though it's an absolute whopper, I really love the way that this smartphone feels in the hand as well, helped along by the carbon fiber texture on that back end just adds a nice bit of grip. There's lovely smooth curves and rounded corners and everything, so it does fit nicely in the hand, even though it is an absolute behemoth. And I really like some of the subtle little details that Vivo's chucked in as well, like the blue highlighting here on the power button. So overall, yep, proper lush. Now, as you'd hopefully expect from a flagship style device, the Vivo EQ9 Pro comes loaded with the latest, freshest Android 12 OS. But everything looks just a little bit different from stock Android, and that's because you've got the FunTouch OS launcher slathered on top. And no, I didn't make that up. It is actually called FunTouch. Is it actually fun? Well, I, you know what? I quite like it, I've got to say. So, for instance, I like how uh, Vivo hasn't really messed with the actual Google UI. It is a very stock Android feel, just when you're flicking about. You've got the Google Discover feed. You've got your apps tray on there. You can pull down your notifications bar with all of your toggles. And if you jump on into the settings, you'll find that you do have quite a few extra bonus bits stuffed away inside of here. So, for instance, the dynamic effects section. This allows you to customize all kinds of different aspects of the UI. So, for instance, the ambient light effect. This basically uses those curved edges as a makeshift notifications light, and you can personalize and customize what kind of jazzy disco effect you get whenever a notification pops in. Can't change up the colors, unfortunately, like you can on the likes of Color OS, but hey ho. This customization even stretches as far as the inserting USB animation and the charging animations. And what pops up when you are scanning your fingerprint as well. And you've got plenty of other fan favorites tucked away in here, including an always on display. Quite a decent selection of those that you can choose from as well, including some very jazzy, funky effects. But Fun Touch doesn't feel absolutely cluttered with bonus bits, unlike some alternatives, the likes of ColorOS, which I've already mentioned. You do get the Ultra Game Mode as well, which I will definitely be testing out in a bit. 
So I've been using the Vivo IQ9 Pro on and off for about sort of 48 hours or so now. And I've got to say, one of the highlights for me, not a particularly exciting feature usually, but it's definitely that in-display fingerprint sensor. It's an ultrasonic scanner rather than optical, so it does take a proper 3D image of your print. And first up, the actual setup was insanely fast, the fastest I've seen on any smartphone. I'll actually show it to you now. So I'm going to tap Start In button, bung my thumb on, and boom, done. So what was that, about two seconds, if that even? And then despite the fact that it's ultra, ultra fast at registering your print, it's so, so responsive and it just seems to work every time. Absolutely foolproof. Even when your hands are a bit grubby, a bit sweaty, whatever, doesn't seem to phase this thing at all. And as usual, you've also got the alternative option of face unlock as well if you can't use your fingerprint for whatever reason. And as you can see, they're just as swift as that fingerprint sensor, if not actually faster. So moving on now, and another highlight here on the Vivo IQ9 Pro is undoubtedly that 6.78 inch AMOLED display. This boasts a mighty 3200 by 1440 pixel resolution, so visuals are incredibly crisp, whether you're checking out your photo collection or just browsing some movies on Netflix. You just gotta to remember to manually bump up the screen resolution to that maximum level if you wanna enjoy those super crisp visuals though, because it is set to 2400 by 1080, Full HD plus by default. And sadly, the 9 Pro can't switch up that resolution on the fly to suit whatever content you are watching. But colors really nice and poppy as well, as you'd expect from an AMOLED display. And you can actually switch up the color output in the display settings, make things even brighter and more vivid, otherwise tone things down a little bit if you prefer more natural, realistic color reproduction. Perfectly bright enough on those maxed out settings so you can clearly see what's going on outside and perfect viewing angles and everything as you'd expect from an OLED display. And like most smartphone displays these days, even quite budget panels, you do get a fast refresh support on here as well. Maxes out at 120 hertz. And as you can see, it is a dynamic refresh rate as well. It can scale up or down to match your content. And thankfully, despite the curved display, I haven't noticed any issues with responsiveness when I'm clutching the phone quite tight. It seems uh, good at ruling out any accidental presses on the edges there so you can continue to use your apps and such forth. And like most of the flagshipy premium smartphones, the IQ9 Pro also boasts a stereo speaker output, but is it actually any good? Let's bump up the volume and see. The new Link Buds are your perfect partner wherever you go. Pretty sure they just described a hip flask there, but whatever, maybe this will be a close second. So yeah, I gotta say, very happy with that output on that top volume, definitely packs a proper punch, but the audio remains clear. There's no distortion, no tinniness or anything like that. Sounds like a premium smartphone, basically. Unfortunately, however, like other premium smartphones, there is bugger all headphone jack action here on the 9 Pro, so you will have to use one of those awful dongly thingies. Otherwise, good bit of Bluetooth action, which seems perfectly fine. No issues with connectivity. It's got a strong range on it as well, so all good. So now let's have a gander at the performance, and I know I've been saying this for basically every bit of the Vivo IQ9 Pro, but it is once again a bloody highlight. Absolutely flawless performance, and that's perhaps unsurprising because this thing is rocking Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset as launched at the end of 2021. If you're a bit of a benchmarking enthusiast and who isn't, well, these are the scores that were spaffed out by Geekbench 5. And as Vivo Blower actually managed to beat the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus with its Samsung Exynos 2200 chipset. So that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 ain't fing about. And I'm not going to fanny about doing one of those stupid pointless speed tests. What we're going to do is we're going to really put the Vivo IQ9 Pro through its paces with a good bit of gaming. And naturally, as this is one of the most powerful smartphones in existence in 2022 so far, we're going to jump straight in with a good bit of Genshin Impact on those maxed out detail settings. And while I'm waiting for this to download, yet another massive freaking update as usual. Now is a perfect opportunity to show off the game space in-game features. You've got a decent selection here, as you can see. Once you pull out that toolbar, just by flicking from the edge of the display, you can see exactly how much CPU usage and GPU usage you've got on the go. You can also check out your remaining battery life, which is particularly handy when playing the likes of Genshin Impact, as that does tend to drain the juice rather quickly. You've also got a couple of different modes you can play around with as well. So you start off in balanced, but you can bump it down to battery saver mode if you're running low on juice, just try and get a little bit longer out of it. Otherwise, if you are playing more demanding fare like Genshin Impact, you should probably 
Chuck on the monster mode. M -m -m monster mode. This will really push your smartphone to its limits. Make sure you get the absolute best possible performance from this thing. And as you can see, there are various other features you can play around with, including blocking any notifications so you're not getting distracted. You can lock the screen brightness, record on the display, yada, yada, yada. You can actually customize which options appear in that menu. So to really test out that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, I bumped up the detail settings to the highest possible level, maxed that out, also got it up to the 60 frames per second mode. And I gotta say, flawless performance pretty much. Didn't notice a couple of tiny little judders in the frame rate, but very tiny indeed, almost imperceptible. It's definitely very impressive, very smooth throughout. Nice responsive screen on the go as well. And one of the issues that I've heard about the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is that it does tend to heat up under duress, but thankfully you've got liquid coolant tech built into this Vivo blower, so that helps to keep the phone temperature under control. It's certainly still got a little bit toasty on the back end, but certainly not to a fingertip singeing sort of level, and I didn't notice any degradation in performance even over a, a good long session. And the benefits of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset go beyond just the excellent gaming performance as well. Of course, you've got the fantastic on-chip security system as well. Built-in 5G modem on there, so full 5G support. You've got your Wi-Fi 6E as well. As for the battery life, can't really complain there either. You've got a 4,700 milliamp cell stuffed inside of that rather gigantic frame, to be perfectly frank. And this seems to do the job nicely for all day play, no worries. If you are going to be on the likes of Genshin Impact, you can basically watch that battery life trickle down rather fast, but that's standard for any smartphone. If you're just going to be doing the usual stuff, you know, a bit of camera play, uh, you know, streaming media, streaming movies and music and such forth, you'll easily get a day's use out of this, even with hours and hours of screen on time. And even if you do find yourself running low on charge, well, no worries at all, because this Vivo Blow supports 120 watt wired charging. So basically plug it in, go to the toilet, make yourself a cup of tea, and chances are it'll probably be bloody finished by the time you're back. And as if that wasn't good enough, you've also got 50 watt wireless charging on this thing. So it charges even faster wirelessly than most phones do with the bloody cable bunged in them. So let's finish up this Iku 9 Pro unboxing with the squids at that rather massive camera bump on back, specifically the 50 megapixel primary sensor with a bit of gimbal OIS built in. Now it's the standard fun touch camera UI right here, which as you can see is absolutely laden with various features and modes and all of that other good stuff that you can play around with. It can be a bit overwhelming if you're fresh to it, but it's got all the standard features on there, the likes of HDR mode, you've got an AI mode which you can switch on if you want to. And uh, as you can see there, this will just further process your image so it maybe looks a bit more attractive. Uh, if not quite as natural. And I've got to say, taking photos with the IQ9 Pro, nice and straightforward. That focus is super, super fast. Just locks straight onto your subject to keep them crisp. Here's a small selection of some of the test photos that I managed to grab with this Vivo blower. And as you can see, impressive color reproduction, a nice sharp detail as well. While the Pro can generally deal well with less than perfect lighting. In lower light, the camera does occasionally struggle to capture more accurate tones versus rivals like the Pixel 6 and Samsung's Galaxy S22, but the detail levels are still respectable. You can also at any point swap to the 50 megapixel ultra wide angle shoot. I'll just get my knuckles out of frame there. Like a lot of ultra wide angle shooters, this unfortunately does capture darker tones compared with the primary sensor, so not quite as natural looking images. I'm also definitely a fan of the fisheye lens effect as well, which you can swap to with a quick tap of this weird little symbol here. You can choose between a variety of effects with this mode and it just allows you to capture some really flattering up close shots of friends, family, pets, whatever. Some pretty trippy shit. I kind of feel like I'm in a 90s rave music video. And if you shoot a lot of home movies of the fam or whatever else, well good news, you can shoot 4K footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second, or otherwise boost it all the way up to 8K as well if you want to absolutely cane your storage. Although 8K does top off at 30 FPS, you can't do 60 FPS, that would be kind of beyond this smartphone's abilities. And again, here's just a quick bit of sample footage. I shot lots of cat-based drama and, you know, pretty happy with the, the visual output there. Certainly nice crisp detail. Starts to struggle a bit more in ambient conditions again, but nothing too troublesome. And strong audio capture as well. Lots of other bonus modes to play around with, including the likes of the night mode, uh, the portrait mode. And if we swap to more, as you can see, there's a few bits stuffed away in there as well. And then last up around front, you've got a 16 megapixel selfie shooter, which again is absolutely fine for your everyday snaps. You've got full HDR smarts on there. You can use the portrait mode to blur out the background. Not always completely seamless, but generally does the job. People do actually ask me why I don't bother with Instagram and there's your answer. 
And there you have it. That in a nutshell, my lovelies, is the Vivo EQ EQ9 Pro. And I've got to say, even though it's bloody massive, uh, which is normally not a good thing for me with my stumpy little fingers and such forth, I absolutely adored using this thing. Uh, pretty much every part of it impresses from the media performance, the gaming chops, through to the camera tech and the battery life. Because I'm playing with it ahead of the official UK launch and everything, I don't know the actual official pricing just yet, but I will bung that down in the video description as soon as I know that. But what do you guys reckon? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a fan bloody tastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.